Now, there is a passage that Larkin shows which is very interesting, Zechariah 5. We're going to look at Zechariah chapter 5. Now, I don't think Dr. Upman has an explanation to this one. That's why he was open to Larkin. So Dr. Upman mentioned that he's open to Larkin's viewpoint, but that it really seems like it's a, the same Babylon together, secular and spiritual. That's what he says. However, he doesn't have an explanation for Zechariah chapter 5. Now, I'm going to give you what I propose to be Zechariah chapter 5, which makes a lot of sense if you... Recall what I previously taught about the mother system, okay? Now, let's look at Zechariah chapter 5. And then I'm going to show you some interesting things over here. That's, this looks like literal Babylon. That's why some people say when Babylon is referred to at Revelation 17 and uh, Revelation 18, this is literal Babylon. A lot of people have heard about where Saddam Hussein, he tried to, re, tried to revive and resurrect Babylon. That's why he's a really good picture of the Antichrist for today, actually. But let's look at Zechariah chapter 5. Look at verse 7. And behold, there was lifted up a talent of lead. Okay, look at this. There's this, like, talent of lead. This mineral, this metal device, shiny object. And this is a woman that sitteth in the midst of the ephah. All right, so notice right here that this is referred to as ephah, this talent of lead. But she's sitting in it. She's sitting in it. Now, if you look at this picture, you could probably guess what it would be. It's like an unidentified flying object. Because it is unidentified and it flies. If you look at verse 6, you'll notice that this is a flying object. And it's made out of some shiny metal over there, so to speak. Talent of lead. Now let's look at verse mm, 8. Verse 8. And he said, this is wickedness. And he cast it into the midst of the ephah. And he cast the weight of lead upon the mouth thereof. So there's a woman sitting over here. If there is a woman that's sitting over here, the question then is, wait a minute, it's woman just like a female figure here. And are they going to Babylon? Yeah, actually, because keep reading over here. Verse 11, and he said unto me, to build it in an house in the land of Shinar, and it shall be established and set there upon her own base. Did you see that? The land of what? Shinar. Did you read, do you know Genesis? What does it say in Genesis 10 and Genesis 11? Babel, Babylon is in the land of Shinar. That's what Larkin uses. Zechariah has been one of the most, uh, it has been Dr. Uckman's most confusing commentary. That's why he did that deliberately last. And actually, thankfully, I was there at PBI when he gave his last commentary ever on a book of a Bible. Yeah! Okay, but anyway. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so in verse 11, verse 11, it's set up in the land of China. This really matches, notice, with Revelation 17 and 18. Larkin ain't a dummy, you gotta realize. Especially when you look at his drawings, he ain't a dummy. <laughs> So, because of that, that's why Dr. Upman was very open-minded to uh, Larkin's interpretation. However, he had a very strong point with Revelation 17 18. This, it, it's more cohesive. It makes more sense that, by context, this is the same Babylon. Well, then, how do you explain the land of Shinar? This is where it gets easy. Because it's not one woman. Verse 9, look at verse 9. Then lifted I up mine eyes, and looked, and behold, there came out two women... And the w wind was in their wings, for they had wings like the wings of a stork. And they lifted up the ephah between the earth and the heaven. <clears throat> Whoa. Okay. Sorry. Now look at this. Uh, it's not just one. It's two. 
It's two women here. And they had the wings of a stork. Now, it's not going to be really stork wings. I'm just going to really draw out like basically demonic wings over here. Because notice that these are wickedness, right? Amen. So this is referring to devils here. So it's not just one woman. It's three. Here's another one. This is called Babylon, Revelation 17, 18. Zechariah 5 does not say Babylon. It does not say Babylon at Revelation, uh, if you look at Zechariah 5. Zechariah 5 does not mention Babylon. So what's going on? In God's eyes, see, this is important. In God's eyes, he sees Babylon shifting toward Rome. He sees it in his spiritual lenses, this is Babylon. Over here, it's just Shinar. That's what he sees it as. But here's another explanation. This is one woman here. This is three women. You know what that means? That's why in the Bible, I gave a teaching on this one a long time ago, there are uh, demonic women in the Bible. Female spirits, f uh, evil female spirits in the Bible. That is clear. Why? Revelation 17. You think that's a good spirit of a woman over there? D did you look at Zechariah 5? Those weren't clean women spirits over there. These were demonic women over here. So here's the answer to this. What did I mention before? <clears throat> she is known as the mother. And the mother will have daughters. Why? Because it's not just one woman. If you think one woman, that's why you confuse the two together. But if you think that there are many different demonic uh, females, you can divide this more easily. So this is one of her daughters. But this makes even more sense when you think about what I mentioned in my last Revelation study, that this is not the only city of seven hills. This is the chief mother city of seven hills, but she has many daughters that imitate her with seven hills, right? Obelisk, you'll see that Washington, D.C., and you'll see Masonic symbols in Jerusalem as well, too, very interestingly. You'll see that a lot of the Masonic symbols in Washington, D.C., is all around the world, and there are many cities around the world that call themselves City of Seven Hills. But history recognizes that these are just imitations. The chief, the official city of seven hills is Rome, they all say. Right. That's the original. Use your head. Don't you think the Antichrist is going to make up many headquarters? Uh -huh. He has to because he's making one at Jerusalem. Uh -huh. Why do you think he has to burn her down? Because this city, Jerusalem, that I'm ruling in is really the city of God, not over there. He moves over there. Why? Because Satan wants to be as close to God as possible. That's what he wants. If you study the Crusades, that's why the Roman Catholic Church fought for that land, Jerusalem, against the Muslims. Why? Because that's God's holy property. God's holy land. Rome, the devil wanted that. The devil wanted that. All right, let's go back. So, yes, it's going to be rebuilt. Literal Babylon at the land of Shinar. <clears throat> where uh, Saddam Hussein was trying to rebuild things, you got to realize it will be rebuilt. Why? Because the Antichrist is going to rebuild his headquarters all around the world. But they're not the official mother. They're just daughters. The mother Babylon is right at Rome. Why do you think the Antichrist wants to destroy the nation of Israel at Armageddon? You know why? Because Jerusalem is known as the mother, right? The mother of us all. That's what God says. God's going to have a new Jerusalem. Paul says it's the mother of us all. So what does Satan want to do? He wants to imitate God. So he wants to get rid of this mother so that he can set up his real mother in Jerusalem. He wants to take over God's position. Man, isn't that book enlightening? When you find things that seem to be more confusing, it actually becomes more enlightening. More enlightening. All right, let's, uh, we saw some very interesting things at uh, Revelation chapter 18. Now we're going to look at, uh, we looked at the first few verses in Revelation 18. Now let's look at the next verses in Revelation 18 over here. 
It says, is become the habitation of devils at verse 2, right? So Babylon obviously has now become the habitation of devils. Now look, uh, th that's the devil's home, obviously. So the Roman Catholic Church is home to devils. You all got to know that. And the hold of every foul spirit. All kinds of foul, unclean spirit is in there. Now notice this is foul, right? F-O-U-L. That's pretty close to F-O-W-L, which is bird. But keep reading. Could it be bird? Yeah, because, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. It is a cage for demonic spirits. This place is a cage and a home of demonic spirits. So any devil you can think of will come from Rome. So a lot of people uh, don't want to hear that, but you got to realize that this is where all demonic spirits come from, actually. All demonic spirits, they come from Rome. That's why when you go inside the building, I mean, be honest, when you go inside there, don't you get spooked out? Don't you get spooked out when you go inside some of the buildings, especially at nighttime, and then they play that organ music? It just looks like vampire Dracula is going to come out. So why is that? Because, see, that's a, that's a demonic, that aura that you feel, that's all demonic over there. It gives that kind of presence. It sets the mood. <clears throat> and they're known as birds. Did you notice that? So winged creatures, birds are fowls are likened to devils. Look at Matthew chapter 13. Matthew 13. This is why angels do not have wings. The ones who have wings are devils, you got to understand. Not angels. Not angels. So, like I mentioned before, then this would be incorrect if this is referring to an angel. An angel throughout the Bible, look up every word about angel in your Bible, and it would refer to it as a man. As a man. The only beings that would have wings in your Bible are cherubims and seraphims. Not angels. Angels are men. The one with wings, like a stork, right? Your angel wings is right here. Devils. Devils. <clears throat> look at Matthew chapter 13. Let's look at the parable that Jesus talks about. At verse 19. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh what? The wicked one and catcheth the way that which was sown in his heart. Now, Jesus is saying, Satan steals the word of God, the seed of the word of God. What is he referring to? Keep going backwards here. Look at verse 4, uh, verse 3 by context. What is he assimilating that with, symbolizing it with? Verse 3, And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow, right? The seeds of the word of God. But remember, Satan, the wicked one, taketh it, right? But look what Jesus puts as the symbol. Verse 4, when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the what? Fowls came and devoured them up, the birds. See, Satan is likened to foul creatures, birds. All right, let's go to Revelation 18. So devils have wings. Devils have wings, but angels don't. <clears throat> 